Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 15 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. In today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about something very, very important for image processing, which is NumPy arrays, because an image is nothing but a NumPy array, which is a grid of values. For an image, these values are pixel values. And NumPy arrays are more like lists, except these are much better suited for scientific computing. So let's uh, jump into our spider IDE so we can actually look at what NumPy arrays are. And spider again, we chose spider for our uh, tutorials uh, as our preferred IDE, integrated development environment. So I'm gonna, uh, again, as usual, copy and paste certain lines of code from a file that have already uh, prepared to in the interest of time for this video. So let's go ahead and uh, first of all, write a few lines of code here, and this should not be anything new to you, right? I mean, if you watch the tutorials about lists, you probably know what this is. I'm defining a list here, A equals to one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's go ahead and run this line. So this is a list, everything works fine. This is a list of size five. Now what happens when I do uh, multiply this by two times? Because my intention here, for example, if this is an image, with these pixel values. I want to increase the brightness by two times. I want to multiply every value by two times. But if I multiply this by two times, and if I go ahead and print this, it's not going to print what I was hoping for. Instead, it's actually concatenating the same list twice. So I have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. This is not what I want. So this is exactly uh, uh, why NumPy actually makes it a better choice, you know, to handle these numbers. So let's redo the same in NumPy, okay? How do you define a NumPy array? Uh, you just take a list and you can just call it a NumPy, okay? In fact, I shouldn't have deleted this. Let's go ahead and undo. And uh, let me go ahead and copy these other uh, lines from here. And I'll explain each line as we go by, okay? So now I'm actually importing the NumPy library. Again, remember uh, the top five libraries for image processing, one of these for numerical, uh, scientific uh, numerical data handling is uh, uh, NumPy. And we are importing this NumPy as NP. NP is the shortcut, okay? And once I have this, I'm going to define a new variable called C. Okay, and what is C? C is np.array. So the way you define an array is just by typing numpy.array and then whatever the list you have. It converts that into a numpy array. That's as simple. So since we already defined our list as one, two, three, four, five, I'm just gonna say my C is np.array of A. Now let's do the same math. My D is two times C, two times. First of all, let's run these two lines. OK, and uh, if you look up here in the variable explorer, A is a list of size five. OK, one, two, three, four, five. C is a list of size five. And look at this parenthesis. As I mentioned in my previous tutorial uh, about uh, tuples, tuples are immutable and they are used as the keys uh, to represent the size of a NumPy array. Again, we'll look at this as we go along, but here you can see that it says int32. In fact, down here, if I say type, uh, this is C, right? So type C, it should say a NumPy array. If I type type A, they should say a list. Okay, so this is the difference there. Because it's NumPy array, now when I type D equals to two multiplied by C and print it, you should see what we expect to see, which is, each element in the NumPy array multiplied by a value of two. This is exactly why it makes it easy for us to do image processing using NumPy, okay? So uh, now let's get back. And uh, uh, of course, you can also try uh, C squared, which is uh, nothing but, okay, you have your C over there. And uh, let's actually do that right here so it's easy for us to see C squared. You can see now we have uh, 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25, and it's telling us that the data type is int 32. You can convert the data type of each element here into floating point 64, for example. Okay. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and do that. I'm not sure if I included that as part of this exercise. Yeah, right there. Uh, we'll get to that then. Let's save it. 
now you can do other type of math uh, for example let's uh, uh, let's go back uh, here and let me copy these lines and now you can see let's delete uh, let's go ahead and include that so I'm defining new array let me delete all of this so we can focus only on this so we're defining a new array a equals to one two three four five B, as you can see again we are defining a list and np.array converts that list into a numpy array okay so we have a of size 5 b of size uh, 3 and c of size 5 now you cannot add a and b because the size is different these two so in fact if i run these lines of code in fact up to here we should see a message saying operands could not be broadcast together with shapes 5 and 3 that's that's python's way of saying hey you have different size numpy arrays you cannot add it on the other hand if i just do a plus c it should work fine because the size of these two is the same now what did we learn here if you have two images and you're trying to do image math then you better make sure that these two images have the same array dimensions and this is true even if you use uh, uh, any other software image j or something else yeah for your image processing okay now uh, the next topic is uh, the one i just mentioned you can actually create numpy arrays many ways and you can also define uh, uh, the data type so if you do x equals to np array one two three four this is a two-dimensional array okay so let's go ahead and run it and if you print x you can see this is almost like a matrix you have one two three four if you have a 256 by 256 image, it's 256 numbers in X, 256 numbers in Y. Uh, in this case, these are all integers, right? If you look at our X up here, it says integer 32. But if you would like to define them as floating point numbers, why would you like to define them as floating point? For example, if you are dividing every pixel value by 2, and if your pixel value is 11, you don't want that number to be 5, right? I mean you want that number to be 5.5, which is a floating point number. So if you if you do certain type, I mean, if you're not careful, you can do math on integers, but then you have round off errors and your output may look completely weird. So be careful about it. So here, when you do uh, D type equals to np.float64, now I converted every, every uh, value into a floating point number. So now if I actually do, uh, I don't know, Z equals to Y over two, and uh, if I run this line, you should see that in Z, we have values of 0 0.5, 1 point, 1 point 1.5, and 2. So now I can start doing some math to my images. So it's very important for you to be always aware of the data types that you're working with. And there are many data types. Again, you can explore those at your own, uh, at your own time. Uh, of course, we keep uh, our primary goal here is to do image processing one of these days. So let's go ahead and uh, 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 import an image. So, uh, of course, you can uh, define your dictionaries uh, and uh, your NumPy arrays and everything manually, but very rarely do we do that, right? I mean, most of the time we like to import an image, do some math to it, do some processing to it, and then extract information out of it. Meaning, uh, let's, let's go ahead and import this. Uh, to import an image, again, I showed this in a couple of uh, my tutorials, and I'll actually dedicate one tutorial just for importing images. So we are using Scikit Image, again, one of the top five packages for image processing. Uh, to import an image, I'm reading this osteosarcoma image, and now I'm going to type uh, uh, print out on the screen what the type of this image is. So let's run these lines again. Okay. So the image is uh, loaded and uh, uh, now you can see it says the class numpy.nd array, okay? Uh, so if you look at my image one up here in the variable explorer, now the size of my image one is not just two, two or five. Now it is 1104. 1376 by three. Three stands for the three channels that we have in this color image, red, green, and blue. Okay, and the values are given right here. So if I actually open it, now you can see all the values here for every pixel for every uh, channel. Okay, in fact, you can go to this axis and you can actually look at this. Uh, these are all the pixel values. So somewhere in between, I have something, some uh, high value showing up and so on. Okay, so, but the key point here is this is nothing but a NumPy array. 
which means I can actually multiply something to this and add something to this and so on. It makes uh, handling these numbers easy. Okay, now let me cover a few more things. Uh, now you can also generate, this is pretty cool, uh, using uh, uh, another way of generating your, uh, your uh, uh, NumPy arrays is just there are certain built-in functions np.1s, np.0s. So if I actually, let's clear all variables. We have way too many uh, things going on over there. It makes it a bit easy for us to understand. So let's run these lines one more time. So uh, in this case, A is three by three array, all filled with ones, okay? Now, why do you need to do this? Well, you can, uh, you can actually, sorry, uh, you can actually create uh, your kernels later on. So for example, if you want to apply a Gaussian filter, you can define your own kernel and then apply it onto your image. Okay, so the, uh, again, things may make more sense once we get to that point later on, but again, you can also define np.0s. Okay, pretty much the same thing. You'll see, uh, you'll see uh, a grid of zeros over there. Now, in this case, I defined uh, np.0s. Now, if I actually type, uh, if I actually type np.1s, even before I type, let me put np dot. You should see a whole bunch of things that you can actually do. Now, one of the things that you'll see if I type O, in addition to once, there is something called once like. Okay, let me select once like. And then in the parenthesis, I'm going to put image one. It's saying fill the grid with ones. And what is the size of the grid? The size of the grid is same as image one size. That's what this is saying. This can be very useful. So if you want to create a blank image of the same size as your other image, you just do zeros like, okay? So let's run this line. And you'll see when I open my A here, so now this has a size of 1104, 1376 by three, okay? All values one. Okay, so now moving on, uh, another random values. You can always uh, fill it with random. So again, let me use the bottom right hand side to uh, demonstrate this. Uh, now let me type C, it just fills with a bunch of random numbers. And if you don't mention anything, the random numbers are the values between zero to one, okay? So this can be very useful if you would like to add, for example, random noise onto your image. So I would just do uh, random, like this image so it fills uh, your image you know you'll have a, uh, a an image with a bunch of random noise and you can add that on top of your actual image so it's like adding noise onto your original image so you can start your uh, getting your creative juices flow right there in terms of uh, how to use this functionality uh, a bit more now, let me get into this. This may become a little longer video, maybe 15 to 20 minutes, but it's definitely worth it because we are learning very real stuff here that's useful for image processing. Now, let me create a new area. Let me delete everything so we can focus again on, uh, uh, on, on these things. And let me clear the screen. So now I'm defining a NumPy array of three by four size, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And now let's go ahead and print the shape of this. So let me uh, run all of these lines. And the shape of this is three and four, okay? So now from this, I would like to extract certain information. So for example, if I just type B equals to A colon two here, if I just type this, or I can actually, let's do this on this side so you can see exactly uh, how the output looks. So this is our A. Okay, now I'm going to say my B is a subset of A. And what is the subset of A here? Colon two. So what that basically means is the first thing that you define here is, uh, I believe, uh, uh, rows and then the next one is columns. So when we define this, we are basically saying that, okay, select the first two rows. And that's why it selected this and this row. So my B is a subset of A where we extracted the first two rows. And the same thing when it comes to columns. Uh, uh, if you want to define columns, for example, uh, then we can just say the first two rows, but then columns from one to three, okay? So when you do this, now if I type B, my B is two, three, six, seven, that's because it's the first two rows here this row and this row, but then these two columns, right? Two, six, and three, seven. That's exactly what's going on. Two, six, three, seven. 
So please feel free to experiment, explore. This can be a bit confusing initially, but then once you get a hang of it, now you'll understand how to take your image and get a smaller region from your image and create a new sub image, maybe because you want to save the memory to test out your algorithm on a small image. Uh, and there are many reasons why you need to know this. Okay. And uh, finally, let's uh, end by testing a few other things. Let me go ahead and copy and paste this here. I just want to show you a few more functionality. Uh, you can actually sum. So for example, let's keep using the right hand side. Uh, and we still have our A, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, what if I want to sum all of these rows together and get the value of that? Okay, uh, and this could be very useful. For example, if I have uh, if I have a bunch of numbers where the first column is uh, let's say uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, average cell size from uh, from my uh, from my well one, the second column is average cell from uh, you know uh, size from well two, well three, well four, well five. But I want to sum for whatever reason all of these average size, and the next uh, row would be. Uh, you know, uh, circle uh, perimeter, for example. So there's always a reason to add columns and uh, rows. And the way you do that is just uh, NP dot sum. And in this case, A, and now you can actually just say axis equals to zero, which means rows. So it added, uh, sorry, this means columns. Uh, I always make this mistake. Axis equals to zero is columns. Okay, axis equals to one is rows. I think we can do the math to confirm that, but this is this is where it is. So axis equals to one is rows. One plus two plus three plus four is our 10 right there, okay? And uh, nine plus five plus one is our 15 right here. And you can also find out like other things, like you have, you have uh, uh, an image, a NumPy array with a whole bunch of pixel values. What is the maximum pixel value? For example, you want to normalize every pixel to the maximum pixel value. So you can just do np.max, again, pretty much the same thing, a. So it reports a value of 12, which is our max. Minimum, pretty much the same thing. You can do other uh, average and all of that stuff as part of NumPy. Now you can see how NumPy is very strong compared to lists. And this is, uh, uh, th this is, uh, this makes your uh, this makes your life very easy when you get into dealing with uh, images. Finally, let's end with uh, transposing this ma matrix. And uh, sometimes uh, we would like to convert the rows into columns and columns into rows for whatever purpose. And uh, the way you do that is very simple. A dot uppercase T. That's it. It's transposed. It went from one two three four uh, uh, being a row to one two three four being a column. Okay, so I think this is where I would like to end. You can go ahead and explore a lot more online, but I think if you have this background, it really helps us going forward in terms of uh, uh, reading images and handling those type of uh, data. So I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. And again, let's meet in the next one. Uh, thank you very much.